Hey fellas. I've uh, been painting the B25 for the last four or five days and uh, it was a lot of masking and <laughs> it was kind of a pain in the butt to get the bat nose on the front. But I think I, with a little artistic license, I think I captured the look and feel of, of what they were like back in uh, the Pacific Theater. I don't go real in depth on how I do my base coats just because I've done that in other videos and, and to do that it would take uh, a few hours. And uh, to be honest with you, I just kind of play with it and there's no real set method. I just kind of, you know, spray and play and, and just kind of see what it looks like and, and uh, go from there. I don't, I don't really, there's not one set method I can, I can tell you how, to, how I do it. It's just kind of, you know, whatever, whatever feels right at the time. So, uh, but I do show you how I mask and paint like my bars, stars and bars. And I've had somebody ask me how I do that. So uh, I kind of go a little in-depth on that, and uh, I don't know, I think it's turned out pretty well. I've already got my decals on it and letting those settle down, and uh, I'm going to start my base here shortly. So I'll put a video out on how, I, how I'm going to build the base. It's going to be kind of like a, a diorama, and from the pictures that uh, I'm going to go from, it's not really a whole lot to it, to be honest with you. I may put some static grass in there and some ammo boxes and barrels and stuff um, on like a sandy dirty surface so not much there and to be honest with you the plane's so big it takes up most of the base anyway on another note i'm giving my 14 year old daughter a job if she wants it but uh before i do i thought i'd uh, see if there's any interest and i told her it's kind of, it's kind of a uh i don't know like a, a a kind of a project for her to see how she would do with something like this but uh, I offered to let her sell t-shirts and keep the profits. So if anybody's interested in uh, buying a t-shirt, like the one I'm wearing. It says Prime Model Works on the front and uh, Prime Model Works on the back. And uh, we make these here. So I just want to get an idea if anybody's interested in a t-shirt. Um, put a comment down below just so we can get an idea if anybody's interested and if not, then she won't mess with it. But uh, if there's enough interest, we may put some shirts out there for sale. And, and I'm not really sure on how much uh, she would charge. Um, maybe $15 or so, and plus a few bucks for shipping, just depending on where you're at. So uh, if anybody's interested, just put a comment down in, in the comment section and let me know. And uh, we'll get on with showing you how I'm painting this bird. All right, fellas. I've got the model primed and I primed it in gray with my typical Mr. Finishing Surfacer. Then I went over the top and the front surfaces with X1 and got a nice gloss finish on it. And then I just sprayed my AK Extreme Metal Aluminum over that. And I just used the aluminum portion over the area where I'm going to be spraying olive, olive drab in the area that I'm going to be chipping. Now. I did a video on this if you've watched my last B25 video, so I'm not going to go really in depth on the painting. I'm going to pretty much do the, oh, the same thing and uh, use Mr. Masking Solution. I will probably use a sponge and just various techniques. And then I'll probably come back over with the Vallejo Airbrush Thinner and uh, make some more chips if necessary. And kind of like with my P61 Black Widow on that video, I ended up deleting some of the and spraying over some of the, the chips because it was just a little overwhelming. But as you can see here, I put this stuff on with a sponge. And uh, I don't know, I'll probably have to, I'm, I think I'm going to come in here and clean this up. I think the sponge looks, looks pretty good, but uh, I think I do need to kind of, I think it just doesn't look right. Um, with, with every chip like that. So I'll probably come in and add a little bit of the Vallejo thinner and kind of maybe smooth some of those some of the chips out. I do like the effect here on the on the back of these cowl pieces but uh, the front here it took me about mm, two and a half hours <laughs> to mask and paint these and because it's going over a curved surface and trying to get the the squares to match up, 
it was it was kind of difficult but I got it done I figured it out and I think that turned out pretty good and then I ended up just chipping away that with some uh, Vallejo airbrush thinner and a brush and uh, so that's where I'm at and I'm gonna get to putting some of this um, Mr. Masking solution on and as we can see here I've got I'm starting off with I've got NATO black I'm sorry uh, olive drab and then what I've done is I went ahead and mixed it so I've got three different shades plus the actual normal olive drab and I just kind of labeled them just so I know which one's lighter but uh, I mean you can kind of tell but just kind of give me a re reference so I'm going to use these that way I've got plenty mixed up so if I need to come back and make corrections I will already have it there and ready to go so I'm going to get on with uh, masking and painting and I'll see you later all right well I've got my base weathering down and I used uh, let's see the four different shades of olive drab like I showed you before and uh, I painted it separately oh and I did use a different color with a little bit of brown mixed in for the for the uh, the, the flaps over here and on the back but uh, got my base coats down and I think I'm gonna stop here and how I normally like to do this is I'll paint it and then put it down come back add a little change something up and uh, I, this morning I did a little bit more sponge work and uh, we'll see if we can zoom in here yeah it's not gonna work out but uh, I did a little bit of sponge work on the wings and just looking at a few different reference pictures and I just kind of took a little bit from each one and uh, I think I'm finally at a point where I'm happy with the base weathering so what I'm gonna do now is is peel off the let's see if we can find some peel off the masking fluid So I'm going to go ahead and peel off this masking fluid, you can see there. I just got to find it all because some of it's kind of hard to see. It's buried underneath all this paint. But it's just going to be as simple as, you know, rubbing my finger over the, the areas and that'll, that'll wear some of that off. And then uh, the next what I'll do is I'll, I'll uh, go and maybe clean some of this up with some Vallejo airbrush thinner get all the chips where how I want them and then I'll come back with uh, the airbrush and maybe delete some and I don't know I'll just play with it so for me this is basically just kind of a play and see <laughs> kind of like how I do everything uh, you know there's no real one set way to do it and uh, I'm you just got to not be afraid to to play with this stuff and, and get it to how you like it. Then what I'll do is I'll come back and I'm gonna make some masks. I'm gonna paint the stars and bars and then I'm gonna try to figure out how to paint the bat on the side of the plane. So that'll be next. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna do that. If I'm gonna freehand cut it, if I'm gonna try to find an image off online and uh, cut one out with my Cricut, which would be optimal because I can get uh, even even cuts with that. So. I don't know, we'll see, but I'll let you know. And I've had some people ask me how I do my masking and stuff for for uh, the insignias. And uh, I will show you how that works out. It's pretty simple. And uh, so that's where I'm at. So I'm gonna take this off and the wings should, they're a little sticky because there's a little bit of paint in there, but they should come off. I'll push from the back. There we go. Yay. So I'm going to take care of that, and then uh, I'll see you when I get ready to mask for the insignias. And uh, we'll go from there. All right. So I've got my masks cut out for the stars and bars, and I'm using the Tamiya sticker sheet. Now I cut this out on my Cricut, 
And basically, if, if you haven't uh, seen my video on making masks with the Cricut, and I think there's a one called the Silhouette that a lot of people use. It's probably a little more complicated than the Cricut, but that's what I use. Um, so I do have a video on that if you want to check that out. I did it a while back. But anyway, this is how I deal with getting the masks off of the masking sheet and onto the plane. And I do it this way because I want to keep everything even and where it's supposed to be. So I've got them cut out and then I'm just going to take my some transfer tape and then I'll come along if I can get this oh, yeah, transfer tape isn't cooperating. Now you can use, I have some Aura Mask 810 that I've used, but it's not sticky. It uh, doesn't seem to work over curved surfaces, it lifts up. And you can't really use transfer tape from what I've found to get it off. So basically I'm just putting the transfer tape on here and then I'll lift it up and it should lift the star and bar up and a lot of times I'll kind of detack this transfer tape so it's easier to work with I didn't do it on this one I should have and then it lifts it up and you've got it perfectly now what I'm going to do is just put this back on the backing from the transfer tape and I've got my mask ready to go now when I do these I do cut out some silhouettes of the star and bar. And what this is going to allow me to do is get it situated before I put the outside masking on. So there's no actual star cut into this. It's just a silhouette. This is going to let me position where I want the star and bar to go on the plane. And then what I'll do is I'll cut out, let me show you here. I'll cut out the surrounding part. Let's get this on a sticker on a transfer sheet. This one is kind of detacked, so I don't know if this will lift this up or not. There we go. Okay, so that's going to be my mask. So. <clears throat> This silhouette that I have, which is the smaller one, but I do have a larger one on there, is going to allow me to position it where I want it, and it will help me align the actual mask that I'm going to use to paint the star and bar. So I'm going to get to cutting the rest of these out, and I'll show you how I put them on the plane. Okay, well, I've got now two different sizes. So I've got my bigger star and bar insignias over on this side. My smaller one's over here. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to do the bottom. And I want to figure out where I want to put this. So I'll just take it off my, my tape. And it looks like it comes right about here. Over just a little bit farther maybe. Right about here is where I want it. Maybe up just a little bit farther. It's a lot easier to do it this way than to just put the surrounding mask on. 
I'm just gonna put this on. Now I'm not pressing down real hard, I just wanna get it down. Now I'm gonna take the actual masking part, peel it off, and this is gonna allow me to put this on where I need it to go. Like so. And I can lift this off carefully. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is try to carefully peel the inside part out. Because I don't want that in there. And I'm trying to save a little bit of sticker sheet. But it's easiest if you make a couple of these little inside parts. Because now I'm going to have to do the other wing. Okay, now I can paint this white, then take the inside part, stick it in there, peel up everything but the star and this inside portion on the bar, and uh, paint it navy blue. So this is, that's how that's gonna work. I'm gonna try to put this back on. Okay, I've got the white put down. And uh, I've let it dry a little bit. I guess I could probably let it dry a little bit longer, but I'm in a hurry because that's just the way I am. So now what I'm going to do is take my star and bar emblem. If I can get this off without it falling apart. And I'm going to detack it a little bit by putting it on my skin. It may not be necessary, but just in case. And I lost a piece. <laughs> Got a piece stuck on my thumb. So, let's go ahead and put this down. Get it lined up. It's pretty close. I'm going to take this piece I got on my thumb and try to get it in the right position. My hands are a little shaky this morning. A little too much caffeine would be my guess. So, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do, even with putting the, the templates and stuff down. So you can imagine what it's like without having those and without using the transfer tape. I've tried to do it, and I've got it done in the past, but it's really difficult. So now I'm just carefully lifting up the border. These 
darn landing gear that I had to put in are always in my way and I'm afraid to I'm gonna break them off if they were plastic they would have been broken off by now but all right okay make sure that's down good now that's gonna cover up all the white and I'm gonna take XF 17 C blue which is a pretty close match to what the like the navy blue color is. I'm going to go along and I'm going to paint it, but I'm going to, with the top portion, I want it faded a little bit. So I'm going to go kind of light and splotchy. So I'm not going to get real good coverage just to give it that faded look. So, and that's all there is to it. All right. We have got the stars and bars painted and I think they turned out pretty good. See, I kind of faded them a little bit highlighted or uh, darkened the panel lines whenever I painted the blue and it uh, looks like I've got nice clean edges and I kind of faded the side ones it's kind of a big model to uh, handle <laughs> without hitting something but uh, kind of made it darker on the bottom faded on the top and uh, same thing on this side and the bottom one I just kind of painted pretty uh i didn't do a lot of fading on that just because it's going to be on the bottom but uh, we will do a little bit of weathering here on the bottom so that's what it looks like all right well you can see here the nose of the plane is done i've got the bat on and i apologize i didn't include any of the video to be honest with you it was two days of masking and painting and <laughs> Uh, I mean, it just, it kind of took me forever, and to film it would have would, uh, taken me twice as long, so. But I ended up pulling an image off the internet of a decal sheet, blowing it up, and um, kind of manipulating it in my Photoshop program, and then getting, a, uh, getting it onto my Cricut software, and then cutting it out. And uh, so that was kind of a pain and then trying to line it up and get everything symmetrical. I did one side and then did the other and tried to get them lined up. I think I got pretty close. But I did that first and then I painted the, I uh, created a mask for the name of the plane, which is the Big Titty Express. And, uh, and then basically the rest of it was just cutting and masking. I didn't use the Cricut on the mouth. That was all just masking it by hand and the nose, and then uh, cutting out some, yeah, because my camera's going out of focus, cutting out some circles and ovals for the eyes. And, uh, you know, that's, I could have used some decals for those, but going over, the, these are pretty, pretty uh, deep steps where the window framing goes. And then the curvature, it's just gonna be, it would have been hard to, hard to get the decals to look good, so. I think the paint looks a little better and a little more authentic. So that's where we're at. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some, before I put a clear coat on it and apply the few decals that I'm going to apply, I'm going to use some of the Bombay ink uh, sepia. And what I like to do with this is I just like to go along and hit just a few pan panel and rivet lines and just kind of hit some areas. I don't hit them all. I just kind of hit a few just to give a little little variation in the color uh, before I put the clear coat on. And I found that kind of, it's it's a lot better to do just a little bit than, you know, to do them all. Then it kind of, it doesn't look natural. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to hit some areas with this stuff. And uh, I should be ready for decaling. And I think this is probably the last you're going to see of this until we get the, uh, get it all finished. I am going to build a base for it and uh, kind of like a diorama so I'll probably put a video out on how I do that and then at the end we'll get to see it all put together. <laughs> 